What's up, everybody? Um, although we're in June, almost in July, I believe this is going to be my first Silent Tears, 30 Days of Confessions uh, of this year. But I have refocused my channel, ATWD TV, um, on more positive things, things that are important to me, things that I want to talk about, whether or not they get a lot of views or not. I just like to be inspired. I hate to just to talk about things that are not important and or relevant to my life at this point anyway. Um, so basically what I wanted to talk about um, was this project that I'm working on for my album, which will go uh, nameless for a while. I don't want to talk about the project as a whole, but I am working on this particular song and basically I'm, I'm talking through it and I'm basically telling a story behind music, of course, and it's pretty short, uh, about almost two minutes long, and basically I'm talking about my father, and so it goes something like this. Um, I'll just tell you guys, obviously you can't hear the music, but um, it'll make sense in a second, so be patient, be patient. Basically, um, I was talking about being in fifth grade and I had a girlfriend who I liked whose name was Tassie. And um, at the time, of course, there was another boy in our school that liked her as well. And um, that started the initial conflict. And so I remember one day after school, I must have been taunting him. We was like going back and forth like kids do. I was on one side of the fence and, you know, of course I was on the other and, you know, running along. And eventually I knew by the time we got to the end of the gate, it was gonna, it was gonna be time to fight. So in real life, I, I, I did get beat up. <laughs> But um, for some strange reason, I always pictured my father being there to save me, to rescue me. By the time I got to the end of the fence, I, I just always wanted him to put his forearm around my chest and pull me to him. And it's like he caught me off guard, but I didn't even have to look up or look back to know who it was because I knew it was my daddy. And, you know, the boy gave me a look like, I'm going to get you another day, I'm going to get you another time. But to me, it didn't even matter because I never felt safer. And, you know, all the tension was gone. Everybody had left. And my daddy knelt before me. And I looked down at him. And he asked me, son, are you okay? And in my innocent eyes, I nodded my head. I said, yes. And we, like, walked off into the sunset. And I remember him saving me. And, and it's funny because at the end of the project, at the end of the song, I actually say, I realize I've been waiting my whole life for my dad to save me. Now, I had a conversation with a friend, a supporter of mine, that told me, he said, well, you need to forgive your dad, you know what I'm saying, you need to forgive your family, blah, 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 you slander them, this and this and that. And I'm like, I can understand what people coming from when they say, when they say I slander my family or whatever as it pertains to the keeping up with the Eskridge's drama and you know all that stuff if you don't if you guys don't know what I'm talking about you just gotta go back in the video history and see it for yourselves but like I told him and it may not be the Christian thing to do or to think a certain way but it is reality and maybe that's a part of me that God has to work on but when people make it plain and clear to you that they don't care about you and that is the Christian version of me saying it like that. When people make it clear that they don't care, don't they don't give about you, it's a wrap. Especially with me. Now it's different if I think I don't know if they care about me or I'm not sure what's going on in their mind, but when you make it clear, yo, I don't care how you feel and you know, treat me any kind of way. Oh, it's 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 a wrap for real. It's, it's better that I don't know because once I know, you can throw it all away. Once my mind is turned over like a reprobate mind, that's it. It's like I'm good on you, for real, for real. I'm a very forgiving person. I'm a very loving person. Anybody that knows me knows my character. I may be rude, but if I'm down for you, I'm down for you. And unfortunately, the, unfortunately, the way the world operates now, there's so much going on, it's hard to trust people. It really is. It's hard to, to say how you feel uncultured and unfiltered and just let it all out and vent because you have to worry about those you have to worry about those words 
um, biting you in the butt. You know what I'm saying? You got to worry about people throwing that in your face. You got to worry about being judged and people misunderstanding you. It's nothing. And I had to tell my best friend that today, like, because I know how I am. Eventually, I shut down. I don't care who, what, when are you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't take certain things. And it's like, listen, if you want me to keep it real with you and be honest with you, you got to cut it out because that's not going to work with me. You understand what I'm saying? And I've realized growing up that forgiveness is different for people. It, it, it just is. Like, some people may feel like they need to be up under the person that they forgave. But, well, at least for me, that's not my situation. I'm not going to be up under nobody that's going to bring bad memories to me. Like, if I got to delete you on Facebook and follow you or whatever, if you bring in thoughts and memories and desires that's not of God, then obviously I don't need to be in your presence. I don't need to be dealing with you. And that is the Christian thing to do. And it's the mature thing to do. If you know somebody ain't no good, okay, you forgive them. You let it go. You work that out. However, you're going to work it out. And then you move on. You proceed with your life. Don't feel like you got to be up under them. Oh, because that's the only way that you can prove that you forgave them. You have to seek the Lord and ask them how to forgive. It's, it's different. I'm not going to make this particular video about that. But on my album, I guess, I mean... On my album, as you guys, it's going to be a little minute, it ain't going to be too long, but as you guys will see, I bring it to you real. I talk about my grandma, my family, my friends, like everybody got a piece in there and it's so creative and it's going to make so much sense as my growth as a musician, as a singer, just living my life in Cali, like I've experienced so much and I mean, sometimes it, it gets to me and I'm like, Man, I am a survivor. I made it. So much goes on. So much has happened to me that could have broke me down. That could have caused me to lose my mind and just flip and snap. But God kept me. And it's not because I'm so good. It's not because I'm the most talented. It's not because, you know, of how great I am. But it's by His mercy. And my desire more than anything is... It's just to be pleasing in his sight. I want him to say, this is my son and who, am I well, and who I am well pleased. I want to be the one that God can depend on. I don't want to be like, you know, the angels say, oh, why won't you pick Xavier? God be like, mm, no, I don't think so. It can't depend on that nigga to do nothing. Well, not maybe that nigga, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but that's what's important to me. And we can't wait for people to save us. And that's how it pertains. I guess that's how I'm going to piece it together um, as far as me sharing that story with you guys. And it's funny because the girl that I got in a fight over, she eventually broke my heart years and years later. Basically kind of dumped me for another dude. You know, I mean, not another dude, but dude she had before she went back to him. So, I mean, we was in fifth grade then, but by the time... Uh, not we broke up. We kind of start talking again. I think I was like 18, 18, 19. And at those times, those times are tender in your life. You think you grown, you think you know it all, but by the time you get 25, you feel like, dang, I ain't know nothing at 18. By the time you get 30, you're like, dang, I ain't know nothing at 25. So life is about growth and you just have to be open to learning. So I just kind of want to share those thoughts with you guys. Silent Tears, you know, that's where I kind of share my heart. I pour out a little bit more than probably as usual, you know what I'm saying? But I always appreciate you guys' feedback. I thank you for everybody that have donated to, you know, my All The Way Driven line, to the King of Petty line. It's coming together soon, you know, I'm just trying to get some things out of the way. Obviously, I have the, most of the finances going to be coming out of my pocket, and I still have to live in expensive LA, so just be patient. I promise you the music, everything is going to come together. The website, like, it's going to come together and it's going to be worth it because I don't put out no trash. You understand what I'm saying? But thank you, Frida. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you, everybody that shares my videos. I appreciate it. I really do. If I forget anybody's name, sorry. Charge it to my, what do they say? Charge it to my head and not my heart. I love you guys. Be blessed. Stay driven.